this week I got a alert that um, some fingerprints that I had made for some work in a district school were not accepted by the state and I needed to get the fingerprints taken again. I went down to the school administration and they explained everything and I was going to go back to the county sheriff's office where my fingerprints were initially done. I went back there um, and saw the same woman that I had seen for the original fingerprinting who took my payment and filled out my forms and had a brief chat with me about a little over a month ago. And she was in tears. Um, she quickly got off the phone when I arrived, um, wiped away tears. I asked her if she needed a minute and she said no, it was fine. And she went about um, my new process. Um, and I explained to her that my fingerprints weren't accepted. Um, and she was still kind of teary and told me that um, she must not have been there when they were done. It must have been someone else. Um, and as she's saying this and, and talking about how the someone else that was involved with my fingerprinting originally had done it wrong, I'm thinking to myself, this is definitely the woman that I had interacted with, but I'm not gonna argue with her because she's basically trying to say that someone else did something wrong, not her. And she's already crying, so, <laughs> so let's not get into it. So she goes through my process and in comes a woman who I saw the last time I was there for fingerprinting. This woman took my fingerprints in the jailhouse and I remember remarking to this woman how I needed to wipe my hands because I was a little nervous just being in jail, essentially, getting fingerprinted. And I, it, it was like my little joke to lighten the situation. So I see the very same person who took my fingerprints initially. And she again talks with the woman who was in tears about how my fingerprints weren't accepted and it must have been when so-and-so had been doing them because she always does things wrong. So I sit and wait for them to do their processing and then I realize their processing, which is filling out a form, um, is only taking longer because everyone's now chatting. The woman who took my request, who's filling out the form, wiping away tears, her colleague, who I made the joke to about taking fingerprints in jail, and another one of their colleagues um, from the sheriff's office, they're all now in the office chatting about how someone, let's call her Sally, is always doing things wrong. Sally is not doing any of her job right, according to the, this trio. She's inputting things incorrectly. She can train others to do the job. And she can do the job, as I gather, but makes mistakes often, so often that many people have to redo what she did. And they're talking about her processing people and processing people into jail where when she does things wrong, people end up with a criminal record that they may not need. And people having aggravated DUIs processed incorrectly so that they don't have a criminal charge because Sally has inputted it wrong. Now I'm listening to this whole thing and I don't know Sally because I've met these people this time and the last time. But as the man wraps up the conversation to say, it's one thing to make a big mistake. That's something. Mistakes happen. That's forgivable. Big mistakes, ish happens. 
But Sally's many small mistakes are the real problem because that shows that Sally's just not careful. She's just not focused. She's just not paying attention. And they discuss how it's a good thing Sally isn't there today because this would be the day that they fire her. And the woman in tears is saying that the following day during a big meeting, she would like to fire Sally for doing all these things wrong. And because she's crying and whatever's going on around her crying, she's actually taking the following day off. So it might not be until the following week that they fire Sally. And then they get to my process. I've listened to all of this and I know Sally's not involved with my goof. I know my goof is because the woman who took my fingerprints was not making sure my fingerprints were dark enough to be received by their system. I realized that when I got my notification that my fingerprints needed to be done again because I remembered that the fingerprints looked really light on the form, they looked really light on the transfer, and it was really easy to get the ink off when we were done. There was hardly any ink on my, on my fingers. So that's the first thing I thought when I thought about that process being wrong. And I've just heard three people talk about how Sally did it incorrectly. And I know it's not Sally, but it's also none of my business. And even if I say, hey everybody, I recognize you. Some of the people had already told me that they didn't recognize me. They must not have done my process before. We're just in a skirmish about who recognizes who. And they already seem to have many things going on around Sally and her work. So I don't say anything. And as I go through the process and I get my fingerprints taken again, and I remark that they maybe should be darker just so that they're definitely accepted this time. And they are now darker after I've asked. And everyone lets me know that they don't remember doing this with me before or meeting me. My name's not familiar. My face isn't familiar. I recognize that these are the very same people I've seen before, but none of these people have the intention of taking accountability. They've decided that what has transpired incorrectly is not their responsibility and it falls on the shoulders of someone who is unfocused and constantly making little mistakes. I think of this situation as I'm thinking about intentionality of our intentions when we're interacting with people. My interactions with them a month ago in the initial processing was not significant, but I remembered it because I introduced myself, because I made jokes with folks, because I took a look at people and, and really made contact. And I listened to them. I remembered their name. But if you have decided with intention to dismiss instances or maybe not take that moment that you actually need and go from one thing to the next and maybe not emotionally equipped to engage, some of these things will be missed. In our conversation with the woman who was in tears, while she was processing me, she warned me that because of something on my um, record where my mailing address was different than my driver's license, I could be cited. And then she gave me a litany of what could happen if I get pulled over. Now, she might be right, but she also doesn't remember me. And she's also blaming someone else for something that no one needs to be blamed for. And she's 
part and parcel adding to her own grievances for the day of things that could go wrong that she needs to focus on. And I thanked her and I crossed my fingers that I don't get pulled over and get cited. But I also am not that worried because my intention is not to get over, is not to skirt an issue or skirt responsibilities. And it's definitely not to get away with anything. But I'm concerned for some people who might be getting criminal records unnecessarily. And I hope, 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 that the next time they have a meeting and they're talking to Sally about the little mistakes that she's making, someone's ready to take some responsibility.